Hi, I'm Doug. This video is going to be about changing out the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card in my 2009 Mac Pro. Uh, the second time I've done this, I've uh, changed uh, the card out in one of the Mac Pros. And um, believe it or not, the second time actually went uh, much worse than the first time. Um, the video is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be the parts and the preparation, the costs. And then the second video is going to be the installation. Enjoy! This is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module itself. This is a Broadcom Bravo Charlie Mike 904360 Charlie Delta. Uh, it has Wi-Fi 802.11 AC and it has Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, this one is an original Apple part and uh, bought it off of eBay for about $25. There are four antenna connections. Three of these are for Wi-Fi, one is for Bluetooth. These are screw holes where you can uh, mount it to the PCI board. And this is a <clears throat> card slot that fits absolutely nothing on your system. So to fit this in the Mac Pro requires a mini PCIe adapter. So rather than use a PCI card slot in the computer, I'm going to use this and put the uh, Broadcom into here. Um, I mentioned the two screw holes back on here that screws through there. So once that's snapped in, you can come in from behind and put two screws in there. So you'll see that when we uh, put that in there. Uh, one thing you'll notice about this one is that the this uh, piece, once you put the antenna connector on there, it'll conflict with this piece, which keeps it from lying flat. But when you put it in the computer, you can't get to this screw hole anyway. So we'll screw it in with that one to the computer. But uh, anyway, since this is nothing but in the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take a pair of needle nose pliers and snip that off. There we go. One thing you wanna look for, this, uh, this particular adapter is a brand called Ubo. It's on Amazon, it's $5.99. And uh, it doesn't include these wires, but it does include the D plus and the D minus USB pinouts. And that's because uh, to make this, this card work in the, uh, uh, the Mac with Bluetooth, you have to connect this wire back to the connector on the motherboard over on the other side. So this has already been, uh, had the wires soldered to it, but I'll show you as a, as a flashback, I guess, how the, the wire was put together and everything. But speaking of the wires, that's another part you have to buy. Um, and that's what these are. Uh, this came in a pack of 10. I've already done one Mac Pro. This is gonna be the second Mac Pro that I've done. And I have four remaining that I could actually use for another one. Um, so let me get these out. So they start like this. These are uh, fairly short male by female cables and they attach together to get the length you, you need. You don't need the green or the yellow wire. So those are taken out. You'll see that step in just a minute, but that's what the wires look like. So the listing that I actually bought these on is no longer there, but the, the current listing looks like it's $8.07 plus $5 shipping. So, so $13 or so to get you these cables that you need. Um, you need to extend the antenna from, so I mentioned here, one of these is the Bluetooth antenna. It's actually this connection is the Bluetooth antenna connection, and that needs to be extended over to the other side of the Mac Pro. So to do that, we have these uh, Bluetooth extension cables by one link more, and these cost $7.76 with free prime shipping. You only need one of them, but there are two in the bag. And uh, one thing that I should mention is all of this on the, the internet guides and everything where you see the pictures, it all looks much bigger than it really is. These little parts are tiny, but these are what the antenna extension looks like. That's one end of it, and here's the other, and it just simply 
uh, see this end would go on the board like that and the other end would go into your existing Bluetooth antenna on the uh, in the Mac. Now, I, as I mentioned, I've done this once before and I found out that the internal Bluetooth antenna was really, really terrible. Um, it just, I could connect my AirPods to it and I could get maybe three feet away from it before they started cutting out. I couldn't even walk across the room with my AirPods and have them work. And anything else I connected to the Bluetooth was kind of on and off. So um, that didn't work very well. For my first Mac, I bought an external Bluetooth antenna. Uh, for the second Mac, I tried to go a little less expensive here and I bought this instead. This is a uh, Parts Express brand external Bluetooth antenna kit. This was uh, $7.49 with free prime shipping. And the reason I chose this one is really small. And so it's not gonna stick out of the back of my um, Mac very far. I think it's just actually gonna tuck into that little recess where the PCI slots are. Hopefully that doesn't hurt the range at all. But what you do is you drill a hole in one of the um, uh, PCI slot covers and you put it uh, in here, tighten this down, and then you screw this antenna on. We'll need this extension to come from the card all the way up to where this is going to be at the back of the Mac. And you'll see that when I put it all together. When I have this connection between the extension and this, there's going to be some exposed metal that could possibly cause a short or cause some grief. So I'm going to use a, a shrink sleeve, put that over top of it, and um, you know, put some heat on it, shrink it around, and it'll keep that joint from being exposed to anything. And that's just a uh, small heat shrink sleeve that I bought at a hardware store. Preparing the wires that'll go from the adapter card to the uh, Bluetooth USB adapter. Now these wires come with four cables, yellow, green, red, and black. The yellow and green aren't needed, so I'm pulling them out of the connectors. They pull nice and hard and firm, which is what you want, uh, but they do pull right out of there. So because of the length of, of these cable and the length they need, I'll need three of these, but uh, one of the cables, this end, I'm gonna pull out because this is gonna go into the adapter card. So you see when they pull out, the uh, little crimped on connectors come right with the wire. So that's pretty convenient. You don't need to strip or twist uh, little wires. They don't come frayed or anything. They just stay right there together. Here's the way the adapter card comes. Nice packaging it comes in. This is by Yubo, Y-O-U-B-O on Amazon. Comes with the card itself. Uh, plus there's a pair of screws that'll be used to connect the Broadcom module to the card. I like this one because it has holes for the D plus and D minus wires. The ones in the um, uh, original guides have little solder pads and I think that would be pretty hard to solder to. With these, I can just put the wires right through the holes and these little crimp connectors fit right through there. So I'm going to put it through the hole and I'm going to bend it a little here so that I can lay it over uh, upside down and solder the two wires in from the uh, other side. Now, uh, I'm not so much a solderer as I am someone who has soldered, kind of like I'm a golfer. I can play golf if I have to, but I'm not very good at it. And I can solder if I have to, but I'm not very good at it. So here's the lead-free solder that I just have around, and here's the iron. It's been laying here warming up for about 10 minutes now. And the idea is to touch it to the wire and to the pad. And I'm gonna hold the solder up on the side of the wire opposite the iron. Once the wire and the pad are hot enough, the solder will melt. It'll flow around the wire and into the hole and make a nice permanent connection. There'll be a little smoke when the solder melts and you can feel the, the wire give out as you're holding it against it there. So I was real touchy. I didn't want to get too much, uh, there it goes. I didn't want to get too much solder 
on these uh, holes because they're so close together, but it really wasn't a problem. And here goes the second one. There it goes. Now let's have a look. Looks pretty good. Give a little tug on each, make sure that they're in their solid and they feel like they are solid. Okay, the hole's drilled and it turns out a one quarter inch bit was uh, exactly the right size. Uh, I had to drill a small hole first and go larger and larger so that the bit wouldn't keep stopping and grabbing in the, in the hole. This metal's pretty tough. But anyway, quarter inch drill bit. And um, so I'm gonna put this through from the inside to the outside. So I'll put the lock washer on there and put this through like that. Stick it all the way through. And then I'll put this lock washer in like this. I'm going to put the teeth pointing in toward the, uh, I'm going to put the teeth pointing toward the nut so that the nut doesn't want to come loosen up. And then I'll take this nut and spin it on there. I have a nine millimeter wrench. I'll go on there and just tighten it to finger tight. That's too big, isn't it? That size fits okay. I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers to tighten it good. Good and snug, that won't go anywhere. Now to put the antenna on, um, let's see, this will be, upwards will be this way. I'm gonna put the antenna facing down. So, just screw that on just like that. It turns out this antenna actually does swivel. I thought it wouldn't, but uh, no, it'll swivel with this thing. also fits this one just barely well it's a tight fit but it'll get on there so what I'll do is I'll go inside once I get this in the computer I'll get this antenna pointed the way that I want to and I'll give it one last little snug on here and that should hold it uh, real real tight where we want it to go it looks like it actually will clear this but I'm not sure if it'll go outside the computer so I think I'm gonna have to turn it like that uh, to go down but uh, next thing I want to do, I want to take one of these antenna cable extensions. And see, this is the end that will go to the card. Uh, let's see, I'll take my heat shrink tube. Let's see, this is the stronger of the two connections. So I'm going to put the tube up in here. These antenna connectors are not the easiest things to deal with. Um, you have to wiggle them around and uh, play with them a little bit, but when you get them just right, you definitely feel it click in. I just did, and you can swivel it. Nope, I don't think I did. You can usually swivel it after they're connected and they won't come apart. Let me 
make sure I have a good connection. So now I take the heat shrink tube. So again, we're gonna to try to put this, and now that I've stretched it out, it goes over much better. And get the uh, connector in about the middle of this thing. So it's about right there. I'll pull a little farther if I can, yep. It's right there, okay. So, I'm not sure how you're supposed to really do this. I'm going to use the wire. I'm just going to take it this closer, closer till I see it start to shrink. See that? Shrinks right up around there. And I'll turn it over. Shrink the other side. I can actually see underneath here where the where the connectors are. So that ought to keep it together, ought to keep it safe. Uh, certainly will keep it from um, contacting anything. So now I'm going to put the card back on here and uh, get it ready to put back in. The parts that it takes to modify this Mac they include first the Broadcom BCM 94360 card. The first time I bought this on eBay, it was $26.23. The second time I was able to buy it for $21.42. The JST wires, which are the ones that uh, connect to the backplane board, uh, were $13.07. That was a pack of 10. Three of them are required per Mac. The mini PCIe adapter is $5.99. That was from Amazon. The antenna extension cables are $7.76, that's for a pack of two. The external Bluetooth antenna kit was $7.49. So for the first Mac, that's a total of $60.54. To upgrade a second Mac, you don't need to buy more JST wires. Uh, it only takes three, they're 10 in a bag. So you actually have enough to do three Macs in one bag. And you don't have to buy another antenna extension cable. So adding up the Broadcom card, the mini PCIe adapter, and the external Bluetooth antenna kit for the second mat is an additional investment of $34.90. So for both Macs, it took a total of $95.44. I hope you enjoyed the video.